welcome to the St. Michael Fall podcast series. My name is Greg Pickens, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this fall is God is doing a new thing. Following our 75th anniversary celebration, St. Michael is refreshed and renewed for a bright future. Now God is calling us to make new commitments in our faith and in our community. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. A reading from Luke chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Then they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there, on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So Jesus gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. He got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with Jesus, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. Here ends the reading. I love learning. I always have. Long ago, I was in an evening class for people who wanted a new vision for their future. Lots of good came out of these gatherings. At the beginning of one of those nights, a man of around 30 years of age stood up and said he felt trapped by his job. This was a common phrase among our group, and many people feel this way. They can't see a future because the present has them shackled. But by the time his five minutes were up, the young man was openly weeping and shaking. He was calling forth his entrapment before our very eyes. He was living it out loud right in front of us. I saw him years later. He was no longer a practicing CPA, but was doing what he really loved. And I never forgot how utterly imprisoned he felt that night. There are a myriad of ways to interact with this gospel, but when I read our lesson, my mind went immediately to our CPA. Now, I don't have experience with demons in the way our reading presents them, but I would offer that we know about them in other ways. We all have either been in the grip of modern demons ourselves or have seen friends like our CPA imprisoned and bound by real or imagined shackles. It's devastating. God gave us life to worship, to pray, to enjoy the fruits of our labors, the people we stitch into our beloved families. All of these are gifts. Scripture is shot through with stories of Father, Son, or Holy Spirit lifting 
guiding, encouraging humanity to be free of all that holds us down or holds us back. St. Paul says we are not to be slaves to darkness, but slaves to the righteousness. Whatever we may experience as trouble in our lives, we are given power in Christ Jesus to move through it or go around it or by the mighty arm of God to be delivered from it. Believers are not to be weighed down, but to be free to lift others up. Our gospel is so powerful because it shows exactly this about the life of a follower. We get ourselves in trouble or trouble comes our way. And it's through Christ alone that we thrive through it. This does not mean we will weather life unscathed. We have seen too much as members of the kingdom to believe that. What the story does tell us is that with our Lord beside us, we can handle anything, make it through any trouble. By our faith and bond with the Almighty, every day is renewed when we live with and exercise that truth in our lives. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>